間になりましたので、えー、記者会見を始めいたします始めさせていただきます、えー、OECD は本日2021年版の対日経済審査報告書を発表いたしました、えー、この報告書につきましてマティアス・コーマン事務総長にパリからリモートで会見していただきます、えー、コーマン事務総長はあベルギーご出身のオーストラリア人で、えー、欧州とインド太平洋地域両方のバックグラウンドをお持ちでいらっしゃいます2007年からオーストラリアの連邦上院議員、2013年から2020年まで、同じくオーストラリアの予算大臣を務めになられました。今年6月に OECD の第6代事務総長にご就任されています。日本記者クラブで会見をしていただくのは今回が初めてになります。司会は日本記者クラブ企画委員で、日本経済新聞社の小竹博之が担当させていただきます。今後の進行ですが、コーマン事務総長にお話を伺った後ですね、日本政府代表部の岡村義文大使にコメントをいただきます。その後、オンラインで参加されている記者からの質問にお答えいただきます。質疑応答には、経済総局国別審査局長のアルバロ・ペレイラさん、経済総局シニアエコノミストのダグラス・サザードランドさん、にもご参加いただきます本日発表されました報告書はあの OECD のですねウェブページでご覧いただきます。今回の会見で使用されるプレゼンテーションの資料は16時に皆様にメールでお送りしております。会見は英語と日本語の同時通訳で行います。通訳はサイマルインターナショナルの西村よしみさん、魚真理子さんにご担当いただきます。えー、質問はですね、画面の下方にあります Q&A、えー、こちらからお願いいたします。ご所属とお名前、えー、質問をご記入されまして、送っていただければあ幸いです、えー。今から受け付けさせていただきます。えー、それでは、コーマン事務総長、お願いいたします。Um, thank you very much,、um, uh, dear Ambassador Yoshi. Okamura, ladies and gentlemen,、uh, it's my pleasure to be with you here today to launch、uh, the OECD's 2021 Economic Survey of Japan.、Uh, I would like to particularly thank the government of Japan,、uh, and in particular the Cabinet Office, for their support、uh, in the preparation of this survey.、Uh, prior to the COVID 19 pandemic, Japan's economy was performing relatively well, with almost 12% growth. In GDP per capita over the preceding decade. A number of positive developments were becoming more visible as past reforms were, were bearing fruit.、Uh, for example,、uh, labor supply, particularly of women, was increasing、uh, despite the headwinds、uh, created uh, by aging.、Uh, in addition, progress was being made in securing fiscal sustainability. I'm just Trying to see with the slide, which is. Hold on. As was、uh, the case in other countries, the COVID 19、uh, pandemic was a heavy blow for Japan. Output fell dramatically, as you can see there. The subsequent recovery has been weak, reflecting stresses on the health sector and the states of emergency triggered four times.、Uh, those workers and households with weaker attachment to jobs. Tended to be the most adversely affected.、Uh, after a slow start, the vaccination rates are now among the highest in the OECD, and the sanitary measures permitted the Olympic and Paralympic Games to go ahead, affording the world some inspiration during the lows of the pandemic. The pandemic is also now largely under control, with fewer than 100 cases、uh, per day.、Uh, robust Government support and the reopening of the economy have put in place the conditions for a bounce back.、Uh, the latest OECD economic outlook released only two days ago、uh, projects that as health and economic conditions improve, the Japanese economy will grow by 3.4% in 2022.、Uh, this is after a contraction of economic activity of 4.6% in 2020 and a modest. 1.8% expansion in 2021 as Japan grappled to contain new, new virus outbreaks. 
Uh, the government has supported households' incomes, preserved worker attachment to firms, and supported firms when they were adversely affected by sanitary measures. So let me turn to the four main challenges facing the Japanese economy as we see it. Uh, first, ensuring long-run fiscal sustainability it will be paramount. Uh, government support was necessary, rapid and substantial uh, in the face of the COVID-19 shock. But gross public debt is now projected to increase from 223% of GDP in 2019 to 244% of GDP by 2023, uh, knocking fiscal consolidation, of course. Uh, while high public debt is currently manageable at the current low interest rates, uh, spending pressures associated with the aging of the population will make current fiscal settings unsustainable without corrective action. Uh, our survey advocates a combination of fiscal measures and structural reforms to bring the public debt to GDP ratio down. Which leads me to the second challenge, boosting productivity and labor supply. Uh, the structural reforms should aim to boost labor force participation, particularly of women, and productivity growth. The spending in these areas would also support demand in the short run while the economy emerges from the pandemic. The implementation of the work style reforms to increase flexibility in working time and increase provision of childcare places will help boost labor force participation further, especially for women. And indeed, while female employment has increased significantly, you know, women are still underrepresented in leadership positions. And women continue to face obstacles in employment, such as shouldering the burden of providing care for family members um, and the like. Promoting work-life balance and flexibility, as well as measures to stamp out discrimination would open up great opportunities for women and be beneficial for the Japanese economy. Um, policies to spur new entry of firms, such as reducing the complexity of business regulation and investing in research and development and, and in people, uh, would help rise productivity. The third challenge is about improving environmental outcomes. Uh, the government has recently set ambitious targets to bring net emissions of greenhouse gases to zero by 2050. Uh, reaching this objective will be challenging given the current heavy reliance on fossil fuels and energy supply. But there is scope to increase the contribution of renewable energies and to raise energy efficiency further, as well as to reduce emissions from other activities uh, such as agriculture. Uh, to do so, the government needs to support investment that facilitates changing the energy mix without undermining energy security, that making greater use of market-based instruments where appropriate would help ensure the associated costs are minimized. The survey also recommends that the social and economic impacts of policies are taken into account to protect the most vulnerable. Uh, the final challenge I would like to focus on is about making the most of the digital transformation of our economies, which is also the special focus of this year's survey. Uh, the pandemic exposed weaknesses with households, businesses and government experiencing difficulties in moving to remote working and organizing support to those most affected. Uh, the reliance on PIPO documents and Hanko stamps has hindered the development of remote service provision. So pursuing the digital transformation can help increase resilience in the face of future public health emergencies and also boost productivity growth and thus a fiscal sustainability. Japan is incredibly well placed to benefit from digitalization because Japan is a front runner in the development of digital infrastructure, in particular broadband, and the population is highly skilled. Japanese firms are at the international frontier for some technologies such as robotics. But many firms, particularly smaller ones and those in the service sector, make less use of digital technologies. And there's a real opportunity here uh, for, um, to advance and to move this forward. Uh, policies need to facilitate diffusion of digital technologies and investment in intangible assets 
uh, complementary investments, uh, such as in how firms are organized, are often needed to make best use of new technologies. And the use of digital tools in dealing with government is also comparatively low. For example, the use of online forms for government services is among the lowest in the OECD. Government can really facilitate the digital transformation, which will be a key objective of the recently established digital agency. Governments can also learn from one another. The city of uh, Fukuoka, for example, has eliminated the need to use a hanko to stamp physical documents for 3,800 procedures. These procedures can now be done online and in a few cases, even in convenience stores. Ensuring that changing demands for skills are met by appropriate education and training is another important aspect of the digital transformation. The government has recently ensured that school children have access to computers, but schools and teachers need training and support to make the best use of them. And comparatively, few students graduate in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, the so-called uh, STEM disciplines, particularly women. Uh, breaking down the gender barriers and making these disciplines more attractive for both men and women for study would help ensure that new technologies and opportunities can be fully exploited. Uh, finally, the system of firm-based training and adult learning is too weak. Promoting training and job mobility would also help raise productivity. So Ambassador Okumura, ladies and gentlemen, Japan was hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic, the same as countries all around the world. But robust government support and significant progress in vaccination, the highest um, among the OECD in Japan, uh, has tempered this blow. The near-term outlook is positive and there are opportunities to benefit from increasing digitalization. And these benefits promise to improve the longer-term outlook while enhancing resilience to future shocks. At the OECD, we stand ready to help the Japanese government in all of these areas and to help deliver better policies for better lives. Thank you very much for your attention. えっと、コーマン事務総長、ありがとうございます。聞こえてますでしょうか。あの、ではお岡村大使一言お願いしたいと思います。はい。ありがとうございます。あの、え、司会の論説員、え、小竹論説員、それからお集まりの皆様、大
後援課長、それからサザランドデスクヘッドをはじめとする日本デスクにおいては、えー、対日審査会合での議論の土台となる報告書のドラフト作成で、えー、多くの日本側関係者と、これはオンラインで,オンラインで、えー、や,やられたということですけれども、逆にそうしたオンラインの利点を生かしながら、何度も丁寧に意見,意見交換を行っていただきました。<笑>また、対日審査会合当日は私も参加いたしました。非常にスムーズな会議運営で、まあ、各国大統代表も日本について非常によく研究した上で、活発な議論が交わされておりました。あの今回の報告書の内容は、コーマン事務総長が今、ご説明をしたとおりで、えー、説明されたとおりでございます。まあ、そ,れそれとのまあ重複も若干あるんですけれども、私としてやっぱり注目して、おくことをちょっと述べたいと思いますまずあのパンデミックへの対応について日本政府による財政支援は迅速で力強いものであり感染率を低く抑えつつ失業や倒産の増加を防いだとこういうふうに前向きに評価をいただいておりますまたあの今後経済は回復の域を取り戻していく見込みというふうに見ていただいております一方、まあ、現在、オミクロン株がですね、これも非常に懸念されるわけですけれども、まあ、変異株の発生などによるさらなる抑制措置の導入、それから後遺症効果が長期的な成長への影響に大きなリスクが存在するというふうな指摘も受けております。それからコロナウイルス対策でさらに積み上がった政府,政府債務。労働市場における男女間格差、企業部門の生産性の低さ、人口減少などによるそういう構造的な課題、それからまあコロナ禍でますます浮き彫りになったデジタル化の進展の必要性ですね、そうした必要性があの指摘をされております。そして同時にその処方箋がこの提示をされております。の EDRC の会合でも、日本がその感染率の低さ、それから政策、それに対する政策対応、まあデジカ、デジタル化に向けた努力ですね、デジタル庁の設置などを、まあ、評価する会、えー、声がまあ多くか各国から挙げられておりましたし、えー、それから構造的な課題についても、まあ、いろいろ多くの意見をいただいたところでございます。この報告書は EDRC がその責任のもとで取りまとめたものですから、まあ、必ずしもすべてがです、ね、日本政府の見解と一致するわけではございません、まあ、ただ岸田内閣が掲げる新しい資本主義の実現というものには関連するようなさまざまな提言もいただいているものと考えています、まあ、OECD にはこれまでも高ン事務総長のリーダーシップのもとでコロナのこうした状態からのですね経済回復をはじめさまざ、あ、まな経済社会の課題について有益な分析提言をいただいておりますけれども引き続き日本としても駒事務総長はじめ事務局の皆様と緊密に連携し、まあ、こうした課題にともに立ち向かっていきたいというふうに考えております。私から以上でごござざいいまます、はい、岡村大使ありがとうございましたえー、ではあの視聴者の方からあ質問をお受けいたします、えー。質問の受け付け方をもう一度ご案内いたします。えー、Zoom のですね画面の下方にあります Q&A、えー、こちらにお名前とご所属を添えて質問を書き込んで送ってください。えー、私が代読いたします。えー、では早速あの Q&A にいただいておりますのでまず一つ目ですねあの、えー、フォーリンプレスセンターの小玉ささんでででいいらっししゃいますでしょうか、えー、日本のインフレ率がアメリカや EU と異なり、依然として 2% のターゲットより下回っている理由、えー、構造的な要因は何であると分析しておられますでしょうか。まずこ,あのこの質問からお願いいたします。Thank you very much.、Um, well,、uh, the reason is、uh, basically, even though Japan, the Japanese economy has been affected by many、um, uh, factors that have been affecting also、uh, uh, other countries, like higher energy prices or higher commodity prices, 
um, and supply constraints. The fact is uh, that so far uh, there was a decrease in wages uh, during the early stages of the pandemic. And so far, we uh, the increase in prices has been uh, significantly lower than in other countries. I think it has to do with part with the with the structure of the Japanese economy. And certainly um, many of the constraints that we've been uh, facing or many other economies have been facing are uh, not hitting the same way um, the Japanese economy. So right now uh, we feel we think that uh, um, our, we are fairly comfortable with our uh, forecast for the, the inflation of Japan. And uh, we think that it will remain um, uh, below the target. Maybe just to add uh, as well, um, I mean, energy prices and import prices uh, have risen uh, in Japan. Uh, it is true that that has not been translated into domestic price inflation yet, and that inflation continues uh, to run below uh, 2%. But we do expect that price, price inflation pressures will uh, start to mount, but that firms will continue to absorb uh, a sizable share of those pressures over the coming quarters. So, I mean, it is something on which uh, we uh, do have a watching brief. はい、ありがとうございます。え、では、あの、2つ目の質問です。え、日経新聞の松尾さんですね。えっと、今回の報告書に、あの、新型コロナウイルスのですね、オミクロン株の影響は含まれているのでしょうか。え、含まれていない場
、えー、とあの私の方からちょっといくつか質問させていただきたいんですが、先ほどあのオミクロン株の影響はまだ、えー、読みにくいというご説明でした、えー。日本の話にちょっと絞っていただいたと思うんですけれども、あの世界的にはですね、今、あの若干まあインフレ、えー、圧力が強く、えー、場合によってはその1970年代のスタグフレーション。えーまあ、あるいはもうちょっと軽度なスローフレーションですね、まあ、こういう症状があ、まあ、警戒されているわけですけれども、オミクロン株のこの広がりによって、ですねこういうあのスタグフレーション的な傾向というのは、世界的に強まっていくのでしょうか、その辺はどうお考えでいらっしゃいますか。Uh, well, as I,、um... Said a bit earlier, it is too early to precisely assess the likely impact of the Omicron variant at the moment. Scientists and health professionals are studying the precise likely implications, and, and you know, as further information comes to light, that, that will play itself out. But I, I would certainly express caution not to、um, overreact too early. Um, you know, I, I think, I think if, you, if you compare the situation now to when the、uh, COVID pandemic first hit, I think that what、uh, economies around the world have shown, including the economy in Japan, is、uh, extraordinary resilience and adaptability.、Uh, the、uh, first wave、uh, had a very significant,、uh, disastrous、uh, impact in many ways, but subsequent waves were managed comparatively better in terms of their economic. And, and social impact. And so,、uh, yes,、uh, additional variants were always a, a risk. But if, if anything, I mean, what we see at the moment、uh, are inflationary pressures. The picture is not the same in every part of the world. Every、uh, part of the world had a, a different starting position in terms of spare capacity in the economy, in, in terms of their、uh, connectivity to、uh, global supply chains and the like. But what, what we've seen. Uh, in recent months, is that、uh, the recovery has been so strong, and the recovery in demand in particular has been so strong that supply and transport logistics and the like wasn't able to keep up, which is, of course, where inflationary pressures around the world have come from. Be- be- on top of that, we've seen significant stimulus into the economy in the form of monetary and fiscal、uh, policy support,、um, you know, to the point where in some areas now, Um, we, we see that the unemployment rate、uh, is, is now very low,、uh, which uh, potentially uh, provides a further、um, element、uh, you know, in the uh, inflationary uh, outlook. So,、um, I mean, I, at this point, I, mean, I, would, I would caution、um, in terms of、uh, jumping to premature conclusions in relation to the impact of the Omicron、um, variant. I think it's early days. I think we should. Uh, wait and see what the、uh, scientific analysis will show. But I think the world has shown in- incredible resilience and adaptability、uh, in-, in, the- in the context of this、uh, pandemic. Thank you very much. The Foreign Press Center of Kodama is the one who 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 is the one. あのじゃあちょっと今の質問に関連してなんですがあの今回の日本の経済見通しにはあの昨今まとまった経済対策の効果も織り込まれているのかどうかえ織り込まれているのであればですね、まあ、どれぐらいの GDP の押し上げ効果を見込んでいらっしゃるんでしょうか。Look, we're, we're very aware of the、uh, new economic uh, stimulus uh, package,、um, worth about 56 trillion yen. And、uh, you know, we do believe that it will help boost the strength of the recovery.、Um, a- an element of the package, of course, also is focused、uh, on longer term growth, which is something that we very much welcome by focusing on investment in physical and、uh, human capital. Um, they're very large amounts,、um, and the debt to GDP ratio will increase as a result. So, it's going to be very important that the design and the implementation of the stimulus package、uh, will be、um, such that we really can maximize, that Japan really can maximize the beneficial impact 
uh, of, of this package. I mean, once the recovery uh, is on track and um, there really is a need also then, as we say in the report, to focus on uh, fiscal uh, consolidation. Now, um, I mean, the numbers uh, as we see them for Japan are as uh, they are uh, in this report. We've uh, updated the economic outlook uh, on the 1st of December uh, with uh, the numbers for Japan as we've published them uh, there. Um, but, uh, you know, this, this is clearly a very significant package. It's a package that we do believe will boost the strength of the recovery, but the design and implementation is going to be very important. I'm just going to ask Alvaro to see whether he's got anything more specific to add. Thank you very much, Secretary General. I think uh, you said it uh, basically all. Uh, the thing that we would like to highlight as well is that what we like also in the package is that some of the areas that we highlight exactly in this report, digitalization, uh, uh, the green transition, are areas that uh, this package entails. And we think this is going to be quite important exactly to address some of the issues that the Secretary General just mentioned on digital government and others. And, uh, and so I think this is a, a package that will have um, an important impact in the recovery. And that's why we, we expect that 2022, the Japanese economy will have a um, robust um, uh, growth. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you OECD has the Japanese well, let me express it positively. Uh, there is, uh, there continues to be room for improvement. Um, and what we are saying uh, in terms of SMEs in Japan, and, and this is not just the situation in Japan, it is, it is the situation across many uh, OECD countries, and that is that um, really SMEs would benefit from um, embracing more significantly the opportunities of the digital transformation. Um, I mean, there, you know, there is, there is a real risk of an increasing digital divide between uh, bigger businesses and smaller and medium-sized uh, businesses, which uh, if not uh, addressed uh, with appropriate levels of support and incentives to small and medium-sized enterprises to embrace the digital transformation, will have competition uh, implications, which uh, over time would leave us short of the full potential of uh, economic growth opportunities moving forward. So, um, yes, I mean, the short answer to your question is yes, uh, there is room for improvement when it comes to the productivity of SMEs. There is room for improvement in particular by uh, better utilizing uh, the opportunities of digital transformation. In fact, it is quite important uh, because uh, the larger businesses have very much embraced uh, the opportunities of the digital transformation and it further increases their level of comparative advantage. And, um, but I hasten to add, I mean, this is not a problem that is unique to Japan. I mean, that is something that we do see uh, in other parts uh, of, uh, across the OECD as well. Um, I just, uh, I think um, the only thing that I would like to add is that uh, what we see like that happens also in other countries is exactly that um, productivity uh, in manufacturing in Japan is very, very high. In services is a bit lower and certainly um, there's a difference between large companies and small companies. We do think, as the Secretary General mentioned uh, very well, what is key going forward is exactly to um, stimulate the, that uh, the SMEs embrace digitalization going forward to improve their productivity. By improving productivity, that will allow um, uh, the economy to also to grow stronger and to become overall more productive. So we do think this is the key challenge, uh, digitalization and how to embrace digitalization for SMEs. And for that, we, we also think that uh, the latest package will help uh, exactly by providing some incentives for public uh, R&D support and uh, also digitalization of SMEs. Thank you. Yes, I have another question. I'm Hori-san. I'm going to ask you a question now. The growth of the growth of the economy has been used in Japan ですけれども、ま
まあ、ぬるま湯に使ってですね、えー、改革を怠っている面もあるんじゃないかと、えー、日本の,そのマクロ経済政策がまあ過剰で、かえってその生産性の向上をまあ妨げているのではないでしょうかと、まあ、こういう質問をいただいて,もいただいております。Well, <clears throat> to boost productivity,、um, you know, what we need is、um, increased investment in、uh, capital infrastructure, increased investment in、uh, education, skills development, training,、um, and, and indeed a, a full embrace of the digital transformation of the economy to ensure that the Japanese economy remains competitive. Internationally, as other economies around the world pursue、uh, the digital transformation、uh, even more strongly. And you know, that is where the government's、uh, new economic、uh, you know, policy package is、uh, designed to have an impact. And you know, we, we very much support what the government is、uh, trying to achieve here by investing in uh, both um, physical and human capital. Um, I mean, it is true that there is a productivity challenge. Again, it's not a situation that is unique、uh, to Japan, but it is one that we must address and it's one that we can address. And, and we do believe that the、um, uh, economic support package that has been released by the government in Japan is a very、uh, important contribution to that effort. Hi, thank you very much. あの私の方からもう一つお聞きしたいのが、あの今回、事務総長のスライドでいただいた10ページ目なんですけれども、えーまああの、フィスカルリフォームとデジタルトランスメーションのリフォーム、えー、この効果で、まあ、日本の債務状況が、まあ、どれぐらい悪化するのか、改善するのかですね、えー、このスライドが非常にちょっとあの私にとっては衝撃的でありまして、今回のリポートを拝見しても、このフィスカルリフォームシナリオというのは、まあ、消費税率を 20% まで、まあ、上げた場合だと思いますね。えー、それにもかかわらず、やはりその2030年代のある時点から、やはり債務の状況が悪化してくると、えー、要するにその財政改革もやらないと、それからあデジタルトランスフォーメーションもですね。えー、一緒にやらないと、あのこの今、ご覧いただいているところだと思うんですがあの、要するにこのフィスカルリフォームシナリオというのが、消費税率を 20% に上げても、まあ、債務状況がある2030年代の段階からですね、えー、やはり悪化し,し始めると、えーあのー、DX、デジタルトランスフォーメーションと一緒にやらないとですね、このオレンジの線のように、えー、日本の債務状況が悪化あ改善しないんだと、えー、この提言が非常に今回の,あのリポートで,です、ね、私の印象に残ったところなんですけれども、どうもやはりその日本の今の政権はこの、まあ、フィスカルリフォームが弱いのじゃないかと、えー、それからまあ先ほどから事務総長がおっしゃっているデジタルトランスフォーメーションですね、えー、こちらの方もちょっとまだ努力が足りないのかなという気がしています。この両方が重要だという、まあご指摘についてですね、ちょっと改めて事務総長のご見解をいただきたいと思います。Um, well, um, firstly, you're right to focus on that graph.、Um, like, I mean, a couple of points. I mean, Japan did have a comparatively high、uh, debt to GDP ratio before going into the crisis. And like other countries around the world, Japan had no choice but to throw a lot of Fiscal support at、uh, supporting、uh, businesses and households、uh, in Japan through、uh, the uh, crisis. Um, but uh, it means that you know, Japan is now in a comparatively challenging position when it comes to the debt to GDP ratio. And、um, it is important,、uh, one,、uh, to uh, boost. Economic growth to generate more re revenues on the back of a strong, more strongly growing economy, which、uh, should、um, in part be channeled into、uh, fiscal consolidation and, and, a, and a pathway to reducing that debt to GDP ratio,、uh, but, but also to、uh, review at the appropriate time the level of、um, expenditures to、um, start the fiscal consolidation effort on the, on the expenditure side. 
um, and to ensure that uh, the um, spending mix uh, is, uh, is, remains appropriate in the context of all of the different uh, competing priorities. The digital transformation uh, component to it will help boost uh, the level of growth and hence will help boost the level of government uh, income, uh, but also over time by improving public service productivity should also be able to help uh, achieve more efficient um, government service delivery. And so that is why uh, we are showing in that orange line uh, what, what we would see the, the, the impact over the long term uh, of the combined effects of those, those various reform efforts. I mean, there is a pathway there. It's very important that um, Japan commits itself uh, to that pathway because, I mean, we do have a window right now, which has been in place for a little while now where uh, interest rates are low. But we can't assume in the context of current inflationary pressures around the world that that will remain the case. And uh, having a debt to GDP ratio uh, at this level in excess of 200 um, percent and and indeed having other structural challenges like the aging of the population, which will put further uh, fiscal pressures um, in, in place, it really is important to address uh, this uh, GDP, this debt to GDP ratio, which which really is too high. はい、ありがとうございます。えっと、え、リチャード・ソロモンさん、え、と、英語で質問いただいてますので、あの、私の読み上げますので、え、通訳の方からお願いいたします。あ、how does the OECD perceive progress towards increasing labor flexibility by firms removing the difference between regular workers with permanent a contract and non-regular workers holding most mostly temporary jobs. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Alvaro to answer that question. Thank you very much, Secretary General. This is an, uh, an issue that we've been um, tackling and uh, highlighting for several surveys. Um, there is a significant difference between uh, the protection of, 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 of regular and non-regular workers. What are we saying is that we think that is important to um, reduce the protection of some regular workers at the same time that you're able to, like it happened exactly during the pandemic, uh, to provide some uh, additional support to non-regular workers. What I think is, is important is, is highlight what the Secretary General was mentioning before, you know, in order to boost productivity, in order to face the aging challenges. It's crucial to continue, like the previous reforms uh, have done, and to the implementation of these reforms is key, it's crucial to continue to increase the labor supply. One thing that we saw before the pandemic is, that, is exactly that uh, women were entering um, uh, the labor force to a degree that was not before, and also uh, we've seen that people are retiring later. And we think that with the Pension Act and with the reforms that were uh, um, were implemented in the labor market, we think it's important to continue that trend. So what we're highlighting here is that it is crucial to continue this way. Just to give an idea to see how the aging costs uh, are so pressing, uh, we calculate that uh, by 2040, um, the additional uh, expenditures on, on the, the healthcare is going to be around 3.5% of GDP. And for, uh, for um, the additional pressures on, on uh, uh, Social Security is going to be around 2.5%. So we're talking about significant uh, uh, costs. And this is why it's so crucial, as the Secretary General just mentioned, to uh, continue to have fiscal prudence, fiscal consolidation, at the same time that you boost productivity and you do these labor reforms, uh, in order to have a bigger labor supply and uh, um, uh, tackling the the impact of the aging on the on the labor market. Thank you. Hi, thank you very much. Eh, to one more person, ah, so it's me. I know, I saw you talking about inclusive growth strategy. It's me. Eh, Japan's so inclusive growth for the purpose of strategy. Okay, maybe I can take this one. Um, just to follow on from what Alvaro and the Secretary General were saying already, there's an issue about uh, the difference between regular and non-regular workers. That uh, this is one of the areas where you do get uh, the, uh, income 
inequality appearing just because the conditions for the non-regular workers are significantly worse than the regular workers. So one thing, is, as Alvaro was just mentioning, is to break down some of the barriers between those two types of job categories. Another part of uh, this is related to the digitalization agenda that we were talking about in the report. And here it's very important that uh, continuing to invest in, in training for elderly workers in particular is very, very difficult. They're often excluded because they're no longer on the, the permanent uh, wages. So the, this is an area where the government can step in and support workers getting the skills that they need to be able to uh, thrive in a, a more digital economy. Uh, the, the inclusive uh, uh, growth agenda would also say breaking down the barriers to women's participation in the labour market. And so there's still the, the, the work style reform equal pay for equal work type reforms are very important in allowing the woman to have a, a, a more productive role. And related to that is breaking down some of the barriers to why women are not taking uh, the, the STEM disciplines, as the Secretary General mentioned in his speech, is very important to allow the woman to fully uh, uh, develop their own talents and contribute to the Japanese economy. はい、uh, well, firstly, we welcome the fact that uh, Japan, like many other countries around the world, have committed themselves to achieving carbon neutrality. And of course, we also understand uh, that different countries in different parts of the world will need to tailor their policy initiatives to achieve carbon neutrality in a way uh, that um, caters for the different starting positions, different circumstances, and different opportunities to make the best contribution as part of the overall global effort. That being said, um, our economic survey uh, does recommend making greater use of market-based instruments uh, where that is appropriate, because market-based uh, instruments generally ensure that the associated costs of reducing uh, carbon emissions are minimized, but the distributional consequences, of course, also need to be borne in mind. So when it comes to um, efforts around the world to uh, achieve net zero emissions so that ultimately we can achieve global net zero emissions by 2050, uh, you know, what, what we need to do is uh, have better global cooperation, uh, bringing together all of the different policy mixes and policy approaches and what we would like to see is uh, better data to inform governments around the world how they can further boost uh, the um, impact and effectiveness of policy measures uh, at the lowest possible cost. Um, and, and that will inevitably involve uh, a spectrum of policy from explicit to implicit uh, carbon pricing. And, and we see that in Japan, um, there's a spectrum of policies from explicit to implicit uh, carbon prices, and, and we will continue to work with Japan on the best possible policy mix for Japan to contribute to the global effort to get to global net zero emissions. はい、ありがとうございます。uh, shortly before becoming prime minister, uh, Mr. Kishida said uh, Japan will not raise the uh, sales tax for about a decade. How do you view the need for raising Japanese sales tax further, uh, given the com comparatively high debt to GDP ratio? Uh, what should Japan do to uh, lower uh, it over the next decade? if Prime Minister uh, Kishida remain opposed to raising the state tax? Well, the, the best way uh, to um, 
reduce the debt to GDP ratio uh, is to strengthen the growth of the economy. Uh, one, because uh, you know, higher GDP uh, in itself has an impact on the debt to GDP ratio, but two, because stronger growth uh, also leads to increase tax revenue without the need to actually increase uh, taxes. Um, and the, the next, the final point I would make is, uh, you know, at, at the OECD, uh, we uh, respect without reservation that it's a matter for elected uh, governments, democratically elected governments, to make uh, judgments on, you know, what uh, is uh, achievable reform uh, in um, national, in a national context. Uh, and what the appropriate time frame is for uh, important reforms. Now, um, you know, obviously, when it comes to tax policy, it's important to get the tax policy mix right between direct and indirect taxes to ensure that tax policy settings uh, facilitate uh, growth. We, you know, taxes ought to be uh, efficient, the least distorting in the economy, and, and fair and equitable. Um, but um, the way to increase the level of tax revenue is not only by increasing the overall tax burden, uh, but uh, the better way of increasing revenue from taxes is by increasing the size of the economy. Um, and, uh, you know, in that context, you know, I encourage the Japanese government to continue to take steps to increase the size of the economy, uh, to reduce the uh, debt to GDP ratio, uh, and also increase the level of revenue, but also to review the level of expenditure and the expenditure mix uh, as uh, you know, Japan does pursue the necessary and important path to get that debt to GDP ratio down. Thank you. Thank you. 引き上げたりですね。え、まあ、富裕層に、ま、風を強化したり、え、資産の風を強化したりですね。ま、そういった形で、ま、格差を是正したり、え、財政を改善させたり、ま、そういう動きが、ま、アメリカもヨーロッパ